That's good. So, my friends, welcome. This is Chelsea. This is Chelsea, Hi. my friend from... I, I, Chelsea, I'm not even sure that we have met in person. I don't know that we have, to be honest. Like, I think maybe once in passing but that was that if we have it would have been way before we like like before the end of high school yeah so yeah it was one of those funny things where I was like I felt like I was kind of stalking you because I was like god I just love like I love everything she's posting but I don't want to be like can I just be your internet friend now but that's it's 2021 that's how it happens now sometimes and I'm grateful for it so I'm glad, and I'm glad that you're here, and I'm really happy that you said yes to coming on, because I know that you've been also working super, 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 super hard to get, kind of get back hold of yourself, in terms of as you've yes. been kind of grieving, and just kind of having like a whole new, like just another adult life experience like that is reset. yeah, very, very huge. So, do you just want to... Tell us about what's kind of like, where would you maybe want to start? Because you can get if you like, depending on how long you have, you can give some context as well. Um, sure. Or you can just, yeah, what what do you? Well, I from what I remember us speaking about, um, I'll just give you, I'll just go. How about that? Um, sure. <laughs> Um, for me personally, I had a lot of trouble um, regulating my emotions. So like, I just felt like I was a victim to my emotions. And like I told you yesterday, I'm the type of person where everything is very intense. So if I'm happy, I'm the most intensely happy person you've ever met. If I'm sad, you know, whatever thing it is, it's just extremely intense. And I kind of realized like, in my early 20s, like, I'm, um, what's the word? Kind of like captive um, to my feelings. Like they just run the show and I didn't like that. I'm like, I'm a very smart person. I'm capable. I'm, you know, why can't I just kind of do day-to-day -day tasks that like I would see other people around me and I'd be like, they don't seem to be having this problem is how I felt. Um, so I actually started because I'm so like emotional and intense, I started using the scientific method for everything I did for relationships, for, uh, making my choices in the day. I was like, all right, we're going to make our theory. We're going to perform the experiment, you know, gather data, analyze data, draw the conclusion. And that's what I kind of started doing for everything. And that just helped me get a handle on my emotions and take ownership of them instead of them taking ownership of me. But then um, kind of from that point, um, you start going through life and cool, now I can kind of regulate myself a little bit, but that doesn't give you any sort of like guideposts or like benchmark, I guess, for how do I go about my life? Like what do I want to kind of put out there, if that makes sense. And so I was telling, telling my girl yesterday, um, my philosophy, and it's basically just two things. And it's, it's oversimplified. Yes. But I have found, at least for me, the things that are the most profound and helpful for me are the things that are just like simple, oversimplified things. Um, so my first one is, you know, how do I want to treat others in this life? And it's simple. I just want to leave them better than I found them. Whether it's, yo, your shoes are incredible. I love them. Whether it's just gassing somebody up or making them laugh or teaching them something, any tiny thing I can do to try to leave somebody better than I found them. I feel like that is, that's easy. It's free. Like gas might get to five bucks a gallon, but I'll gas you up for free, son. Like that's, there's no reason not to. Um, so that's just, and it seems oversimplified, but why, why make it more complicated than that? Just be kind, treat people, leave people better than you found them, even if it's this much. And then that leaves kind of, um, how you treat yourself and how you want to feel. And for me, I like to think of things in analogies and think of things as something else to help me 
get a clearer idea on it. Um, so I began to think of my peace, my happiness, my comfort, my all the things that you would uh, kind of ball together and call like happiness, right? We're just going to say happiness because you guys can probably understand what I mean by that. I started thinking of happiness as not this like thing that needs to be attained. I thought of it like a business. I thought of all my feelings and myself as a business entity. And I want to be a majority owner of my happiness. Mm. I don't need to be 100% happy. I don't need to be happy all the time. But if I'm a 51% owner of my happiness, that means I own it. No one can take it from me. I could be 49% depressed or sick or, you know, life's like trail mix. It's a freaking mixed bag. It's not, you're not just going to have a hundred percent of one thing. I, I, I don't feel, um, but I started thinking of it in that 51%. If I can just get to 51% happy today, I won. I did it. I own my happiness. And when I started thinking of it that way, it's, it, it's silly. I know, but I would come into work some days and be like, boss, I'm at like a 10. You've got to help me get to 51% today, bro. Like I got to, I got to get to 51% and it's so silly, but the more I started just vocalizing that and using that as a sort of mental representation of how I was feeling, it almost made it like a game. It almost made it like, oh, I'm having a shitty day. I'm only at a 10%. Like now people are aware of it. Now they're all cracking jokes and trying to like, you know, bust balls with me or whatever. And it's, it's a way that I can gauge where I'm at and also let others know where I'm at in a palatable way for myself, if that makes sense, because I don't like to get wrapped up in a lot of the, um, you can get kind of, kind of deep with it. You can kind of like, when you start thinking about all this stuff, you can get really deep with it and you learn all these words and phrases and you do all this research and you educate yourself and but for me sometimes i get overwhelmed with it and there i get too much information and i'm like well i what and then to me it's like no just 51 percent happy leave people better than i found them and then all the other stuff the the brain fog and the static kind of goes away and that was kind of just like the the basics of what we talked about it's cheesy but that's that's what it was so <laughs> No, I, I'm I'm really glad and I'm glad that you remembered because I, I was forgetting, like I knew there was something and it was that 51% part that I just found really interesting because like what we do here, guys, is like at least we're finding the names of those emotions, right? But I feel like what Chelsea right. was realizing was she was, you know, as she was collecting her data, she was collecting the feelings and then trying to figure out, okay, well, I know that the result... Well, hmm, okay, but scientific method, though, this might just be active reflection, because I'm like, well, scientific method, you're not necessarily hoping for a certain outcome, though, either, um, but you are no, still gathering your facts. Step. Yeah, 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 it's a starting step, too. That was just my too. starting step, because I didn't have a philosophy. Does sure. that make sense? Like, yeah, no, that makes sense. I didn't know what to do, so I had to just go into, like, straight... And people laugh facts, non-judgmental like bias, like, just looking, observing. Yeah, exactly. Just trying to like be a journalist, like just see and report and take it in and stuff like that. And so that kind of my philosophy pro progressed from the scientific method, which I just find mm -hmm. so funny. Like, <laughs> no, I think that that's you fantastic. Science to like help your emotions. <laughs> well, it's it's funny. Well. Well, there's a there's two things because the PDF I meant to send you yesterday about everything is effed, a book about hope, um, three of the chapters in there, they take Newton's laws of motion and turn them into Newton's laws of emotion. Oh, that sounds right up my alley. <laughs> and so it's such where it's like, um, let's see how fast I can find it. Um, let me see if I can find them. While I'm looking for the Newton's Laws. Guys, do you guys have any questions for um, Chelsea? She's just so fantastic. So just really like any, I feel like even if you feel like you have a random question, feel free to yeah, try and no ask. no question is weird. 
No um, question and then I do want to say um, good morning to my dad. My dad just got here. He checks in during work. Uh, Daddy fur. Um, and then Kel and Fredo said, love that. Good stuff. Dad said, um, love it. Very positive outlook. Control the controllables. Um, Neb says, Chelsea, pineapple on pizza or no? Hell yes. All day, yes! every day. Yes! <laughs> Pineapples do go on pizza! Bring out the dancing lobsters! <laughs> yes! I need a gift. I need a dancing lobster gift, to be honest. Don't we all? <laughs> she says, I approve. Uh, Dale says, I'm lurking, but how many licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Mm. Let's find I out! Just kidding. <laughs> A one, oh, crap. a two, okay, a three, a three, crunch. <laughs> Neb says oh, I approve. No, Dad me. says I like focusing on the positives. Asta says fruit on pizza is disgusting, but Asta's from the Netherlands, so he talks about well, fancy you know, food that I've never heard of. Yeah, you probably eat some weird stuff over there too. <laughs> different flavor combos. I did hear y'all talking about that mustard on watermelon. I've been seeing that lately. And like, I'm so disgusted. But at the same time, I have so many weird flavor combos myself that other people would be disgusted at where I'm like, you know what? I should probably just try it, to be honest. I feel like I want to try it, but I'm terrified to try it. But I don't understand everyone's <laughs> reactions. Like, I don't understand how people are enjoying it. It makes me uncomfortable. I know! <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, Wild says fruit on pizza. I don't mind it, but I would not prefer. Dad says PB and jelly on vanilla ice cream. Uh, Neb says I might try it because I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's a thing. Just it, what kind of mustard? Dijon honey? It, I think it's just like regular yellow mustard. Just Reggie. Just Reggie French's yellow mustard. Smile. You got French's. <laughs> okay. So I found. Oh, what? What did you say? Huh? Oh, Me? okay. 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 So I found the laws of emotion. So Newton's first law of emotion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite emotional reaction. Second law of emo emotion. Our self-worth equals the sum of our emotions over time. Damn. <laughs> I was like, I'm like having to just digest this. Do you know what I mean? No, we did. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Are you ready for this one though? Probably not. <laughs> the third one your identity will stay your identity until a new experience acts against it. Woo! Sheesh! <laughs> Where did you find this? The, the Everything is Effed book. Oh, yeah. Bye, Dad. Love you. Have a fantastic day. Thanks yeah, for bye, coming. Yeah, bye, Dad. Love you. Thank you for coming. Um, so I I'm going to make sure to send this, and I'll, I'll share it with whoever else um, wants it. The, the copy that I have, I made notes on. Like, I highlighted stuff. So, like, even if you're not where sure where to start, you can scroll until you find, like, highlighted stuff. But... That one was, I thought that was interesting, and it's neat how you were using, you know, your scientific method to observe non-judgmentally, and then we look at, you know, our new, the Newton's laws of emotions, and that similarly is also an observation that is very true. Your self-worth is absolutely a sum of what you've experienced because where what other what where else would we be getting that from right and not to like go on a like weird tangent maybe but like that's let's be real that's what you and i do um i often find it interesting the idea of like you meet some schools of thought that are basically like whatever happens to you or that you've been through, you know, that doesn't define you. You can move past that. You have other schools of thought that say every experience you have is what defines you. 
Um, and I kind of used to always want to know, like, nature, nurture, nature, nurture, which one is it? And I think it's a combination of both. Oh, I, I fully think your agree. past, your, your past experiences, like, sometimes I think of the things I've gone through, I'm like, God, I would do anything to delete those files. But if I deleted those files, I would literally not exist. Like, it's, it's part of who I am. It's made me Like, you might lose a develop. random bolt or nut if you try to delete a bad file. You could delete a right. bolt or a nut that could be My very necessary. Yeah. And then it's like, but you can't be that person that's also just so stuck in any like maybe bad or traumatic experience you've had you have to like be able to and maybe that's where the scientific method for me came in i was not able to pull myself out that's of those that's, traumatic experiences and feelings to analyze them yes that okay so yeah so, I, that's cool that that's your thing because i think that that's what it was for me with these feeling words a year a year ago also the boy is slouching on the footstool for those of you who are looking at the stream he is up in the corner sleeping like a nice boy and then also about to belly flop on Chelsea's head as well um <laughs> um uh, uh turds I got all of the distraction um so with the feeling words it, it before I was introduced to the feeling words I, it just felt like I would live as my emotions they were me and i was them and sometimes it was like it doesn't it sounds so silly to say now or sounds silly to say for someone who's like i guess like on the other side of it kind of but like it felt like i didn't want to be in other emotions like if this was the emotion i was experiencing i'm gonna live this i'm gonna continue to be this way it it, it like it doesn't feel like it's allowed to be done. Like, oh, we'll just try to pick something to make you feel better or feel happy. I didn't understand, like, I didn't understand what that meant. However, once we, you with your scientific method and me with the, to be able to separate what we're feeling and name it or identify it and be like, this is that thing, that's when it felt like it made the difference to be able to look at it and figure out what to do next. Instead of it being a nebulous thing, for me, it always felt nebulous, like not clear and concise. It's just like you're, you're just feeling an like energy. Kind of yeah. And it's just like exhausting. And then you're kind of wondering, like, I, for me, I was living in a lot of fear. I didn't want to do a lot of things because I'd be like, what if, what if I get sad when I'm there? What if I, what if I get sad? And it's like, girl, if you get sad, then you're sad at the lake. It's not the end of the world. Go to the lake. Like, <laughs> it's like I've put this weird, like, pressure of, like, oh, my God, like, don't feel emotions that people on Hallmark cards wouldn't be okay with. It's like, no, you can, you can feel things. And I think for me, I, this is just my own experience speaking because everyone's experience is so different. I was, like, kind of in that household where like you have to appear perfect on the outside so like really like letting into your emotions was not something yeah it just felt really like it was stuff to... inside it just felt like it was stuff inside of you but there wasn't a way to describe it because the ultimate goal for everyone else around us was to get us to stop needing support really so that we could go right. back to being productive like, members of society picture. Yes, go match the kids, be at church on Sunday, do what we need you to do. And then, you know, it was only, basically for me, problems were only ever addressed when it would get to a crisis mode where it couldn't be ignored. Where it's like, oh crap, like she's X, Y, Z, or she went to school drunk. Like where something, it has to be addressed. It was never an environment where it's like, hey, today I'm feeling like this. Where is this coming from? Yeah. Like, I've had to learn to cultivate that space in myself as an adult. And it's like, it's cool. I like it. <laughs> well, it, it was, someone had come in at the beginning of stream this morning. To, I, one of the things they said was they felt like they didn't earn a lazy day. And I, hearing that, that was I like another that. thing. I was like, hold on, man. I guess I just want to reframe this. Like, we don't need to be earning lazy days. I don't know what to do to make that different or make us feel more deserving to have a lazy day but we don't need to be earning our lazy days 
because really, (laughs) because in the same way I think about hypochondria, lazy is a difficult word to be using towards people or towards yourself because laziness for a lot of people with ADHD, for example, that's executive dysfunction. Right. Laziness can be being super, super tired as well. What are you tired for? Fatigue club. <laughs> what 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 uh, is causing also, this? I think it's a I think a big part of it is actually just societal because we have we have put a monetary value on everything to the point if you aren't like view yourself as a walking dollar sign. It's either going up or down with every action. Your value, your value is a dollar sign, whether it's full or not full. Yeah. Correct. And so even if we're saying to ourselves, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to relax. I'm going to have a lazy day. Oftentimes a, you don't even relax because you just feel so freaking guilty and you're putting all this psycho pressure on yourself of what you should be doing. Newsflash, we could all be doing more, all of us. But guess what? This is the newsflash I just learned, and you and I were just talking about it, obviously. I went from working 80 hours a week to completely taking time off work to get better and being like, what have, what have we learned? And yes, we could all be doing more, but we could all be doing a little bit less. And what I mean by that is we could make time not money related. You taking a lazy day isn't a lazy day in my mind. That's a restful time. That's you putting value in yourself. You're the asset, right? You're the asset in whatever it is you're doing. Um, Taking that time to have a lazy day is something that has taken me 10 years to figure out. And I wish I would have figured it out sooner, as silly as that sounds, because um, I've I've ground out a lot of time that I could have been relaxing because even in, I've always taken my work home with me, even if it's the dumbest job ever, I stew about it. I I'm a perfectionist. I'm passionate, but that ain't no way to live. So don't I like as counterintuitive as it may feel, do not feel guilty for your quote lazy days. Um, think of it instead as your pace. What does your pace for today need to be? Shoot, sometimes it's what is my pace for this hour, this afternoon. I remember after my boyfriend died, for me, people would say take it day to day, hour to hour. I had to take it minute to minute of just like get through another minute. And that's not enjoyable. But my point is that was the pace I had to take it at at that point. Some days, I can get so much done. I'm like, dang, I feel good. And then some days I wake up and then two hours later I take a nap and I'm like, what the heck? And the old internal monologue would have been, oh my God, why weren't you uh, having a garage sale and applying for two more new jobs and going back to school and doing this and this and this and that. The new me doesn't even think twice about it. I'm like, wow, I'm so glad I took that time to take care of my body that I've been neglecting for 10 years. And that's just been such... And I can't, I wish I had advice on like how to make that flip switch. Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird? Everybody's got a different thing. You know what I mean? Everyone has a different aha moment or whatever you want to call it. But this is brand new and fresh for me. So I've, I'm of course like excited and impassioned to talk about the importance of rest and pacing yourself. Cause I've been running a sprint and it's a marathon It is not a sprint. <laughs> That's facts. I My think the funniest part is that all gas, no brakes. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, all gas, wrong. no brakes. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I <laughs> want to be that so that I can get on your level, like, you know, make the same productivity and stuff. But it's what I'm learning now is like, well, you know, I think I almost have more value in modeling. So PPD said, slow down to speed up. And that was really my mantra last fall. That was my mantra last fall when I was uh, starting streaming and just trying to figure everything out. Slow down to speed up because your your car even slows down when it shifts gears to speed up, even if it's for a split second. I love that concept. I really love that. Well, it's new to me just now, but are you good? Um, Hold on. Yeah, sorry, my phone's starting to blow up. I might have to wrap it up here pretty soon. No worries. We got a good whole 
like 25 minutes anyway. Shoo, we did pretty good, I'd say. Um, w one more, one more thing. Um, do you just want to share about the, how you got to the three things a day thing and just share a little bit about that? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. So, um, my, my ex who passed, um, he was my, the owner of the company I worked at. And so he was, he would coach me up like all the time. And so every day after shift and it was really annoying at first but i grew to so appreciate it he would call me and ask for three good things three three bad things what's good what's bad tell me three good things that happened three bad and it actually became it was just about you know the shift at work well we got an order out late or whatever but i began to adopt that into my everyday life as far as setting goals um, I set small goals. They don't ever have to be, and they, they can be as simple as, um, take a shower, like literally, but I'll write three things that I want. If I had to pick only three things in this whole day to accomplish, um, what would they be? Whether it's work, play, rest, whatever, what are those three things? And I write them on my little whiteboard and then I put a word of affirmation at the bottom of it. Um, you know, pace yourself, be gentle with yourself, go kick ass, girl, you know, go get your hot girl summer, whatever it is, I'll just put a little word on the bottom. Um, and then at the end of the day, I'll look at it um, and see, did I do those things? And pretty much 100% of the time, I end up not only getting those three things done, but a lot more, but then sometimes I don't get any of them done. And then I see that affirmation at the bottom of like, be gentle on yourself. And I'm like, okay, it's okay. I can do these three things tomorrow. It's okay. Like it, it got rid of my deadlines while also holding me accountable. It's like the more I would set these daily goals and be looking at them and be accountable. If I didn't reach them, it was okay. Instead of going through every day being like, you get to the end of the day and you're, and you kind of feel like crap because you don't even know what you did in a day. Like I wonder, for me, I have like some dissociated stuff, so I won't remember. So like writing it down and seeing mm. like my little list of things, I, I love to see it because I won't remember doing it like straight up. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I wonder if even like, so I feel like it would bleed kind of that energy of, you know, pacing yourself. It would bleed into the reaction for at the end of the day, if you didn't do any of the things what you did do likely that day was probably hopefully were being mindful and taking care of yourself if you didn't get the chance oh are you still there chelsea 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 rip can you hear me? Oh, are you back? Yay! Yes. Oh, but what I was going to say when I got dropped was that's why I always put that affirmation at the bottom. Just in the off chance I don't get the things done. Because my first response is like, oh, I see it. And even if I don't feel it, just seeing those words reminds me. I'm having the thought, I feel bad that I didn't do this, but that it's okay. Yeah. And it's as simple as that for me. What what I was saying, I feel like it kind of leads to the, just the mental, like, if you didn't get those things done, chances are you probably spent some mindful energy trying to keep yourself well that day. So Correct. you did do things, you just didn't do the things on the board. But let's now remember right. that, like, our existence is doing, really, if we're trying to meet it's needs. So like if you're awake, then you having your eyes open might be the accomplishment that day. And that instead was the goal. You changing your underwear, that instead was one of the checkoffs. Like change the goals at the end of the day if you realize you didn't get them done because it's like, well, yep. I did sit up. Mm -hmm. And also for me, that's what you just said is huge. Of uh, I changed my goals. My goals used to be so productivity minded whereas now they're more self-care minded which gets me to be more productive does that make sense like if i shift the focus to what do i need now i feel good 
Now I'm up at 7 o'clock. I've already taken a shower and put makeup on. Now I can do six loads of laundry because I feel great. And that wasn't even on my list. My list was to take a shower. You get what I mean? So, like, I've really shifted my focus on what do I need to get done to what do I need? Yes. And then I can get more done. That's, wow, so, that's a really good, I'm going to type that. I'm going to type that quick. What do I need to get done versus what do I need? That's, that's a big one. You were talking about executive dysfunction earlier and God, the more I kind of see it popping up, the more I'm like, man, I'm going to bring this into my therapist because <laughs> I'm very like anal. Like, I don't know if you have me on Snapchat, but I, I posted a video yesterday of my shoe rack and my underwear drawer. And I said, show me you're overcompensating for a hectic childhood without telling me because literally my underwear are folded and color coded like I love order I love to I love projects of organization cleaning nesting so my brain is always just thinking of something I should be freaking doing and it's like no that great that I like to organize my freaking drawers but like you can go just relax for a minute like it's okay. <laughs> what you bringing up because, the laundry like, real quick? Like, oh, go go ahead. That, the, the laundry is my. It just shows you where my mental state is. But you mentioned executive dysfunction, and for me, as a person who likes to color coat underwear, I will start thinking of a hundred thousand different things that I could do that would make me really happy once they were done. But there's so many of them that like literally I'll spend an hour like zoning out, realizing that I've just been sitting there thinking about all the things and which order and maybe I start this, but then, and then I don't get anything done. And it's like, oh my gosh, I should not be making these lists. For me personally, I don't need to make a to-do list in that fashion. I need to make a for me list, take care of my own self, and then I don't need a list. I can just start. Because you just kind of start doing. And I was going to say, it's funny you bring up the laundry thing because never am I ever the kind of person to put laundry away or fold laundry. I happily will live out of a clean laundry basket. If it's in the laundry basket and right. it's clean, like that's cool. However, the past two times I've done a load, I have folded those clothes and put them away. Woo! Yeah, girl. And it wasn't even like a... How do I get myself in the mindset to be able to be willing to put my clothes away? I just did it. And I think it's probably because I'm meeting other needs. Yes. The, the focus has to be on your damn self and self-care. And it's, you see it all the time. I advocate for it. I'm a big, I'm that person that's always there. But like, I have neglected all of my physical, mental spiritual whatever you want to call it energy and now is a it's a very kind of critical time in my life where I decided to take a different path I was like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wear myself out like this forever like this is not enjoyable so I my literal goal is just to enjoy my damn self without hurting nobody and I think you should just simplify things and most of the time, the things you need to know are the lessons you learned in the first grade. And it's just like learning to apply them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, learning to apply them in a way that we weren't exactly allowed to. Correct. Because that would have made us less productive. Correct. If you think mm, about it. Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> <laughs> So. Uh, I need to get off here, but I really appreciate you having me on, and I hope that somebody even got one something from part of this word vomit, because we all know I am not refined. <laughs> no, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and I'm really glad, like, I'm really happy that you, like I said, were able to remember, even though that's, like, how you've been living, like, you blew my mind yesterday, and I was like, we, <laughs> we gotta take this to the class. Because I'm not going to be well, able to explain it. Well, I hope the class enjoyed. <laughs> I appreciate you. Your homework you. is those two points. And I will see you guys later. Thanks for being here. Bye. Bye. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. That was fan-flippin-tastic.